Hello everyone, this is Daniel again, and I want to do a little tutorial on iMovie. So first thing we're going to do is go down to the iMovie icon and launch it. And just so you know, iMovie, there's a few limitations. One is where you can store the project file. You can only store it to the computer that you're working on, so take that consideration. And I'll show you right now where the iMovie file goes. If you go to Local Storage, and there should be a folder on your computer called Movies. Do a little drop down and you'll see your name. As soon as you launch iMovie, it's going to make a project file for you inside of your uh, NetID folder. So that's where you need to go back to if you need to locate your project. So let me go ahead and say, no, we don't want a new version. Just hit cancel. And just to begin with, the capture window came up, and that's because I have a capture device hooked up to the uh, Mac. And I just have a FireWire connection to one of the mini DV decks you can check out from the Multimedia Center. And it's smart enough to know that it's attached, so it, this dialog came up. And there's two options when this dialog comes up. One is automatic, and the other is manual. If you just want to record the whole tape, that's what automatic does. Manual, you're, you're able to search through the footage by hitting play and rewind and find the clip that you want and prep it for importing. I'd always suggest doing it manually so you don't have to go through a bunch of footage that you don't need to later. I'm going to go ahead and hit import and that's going to ask me where do we want to save the files. You are probably going to be better off if you save the files on the local storage drive that doesn't get erased every time the computer logs off. If you had an external hard drive, you could also save your files there and be a little bit more secure. But for our purpose, local storage is fine. I'm going to call it iMovie Demo. Hit OK. And it's going to be importing the files to the local storage drive under iMovie Demo. I'm going to go ahead and hit Stop. And you can see now I have some clips. Let me get out of the capture window. I have some clips uh, ready to import in now to the program. They're actually in the pool of footage down below. This is where iMovie stores all the files that you have captured. And you can see if I just click and drag over a section of footage, it will allow me then to bring that footage. Whoops. It allow me to just click and drag and drop it up on the top and this is where you assemble your program so let me just grab a couple clips here and now if I click at the beginning and hit spacebar I can see it playing back in real time iMovie sometimes starts off your project in widescreen and for our purpose we shot on mini DV standard definition and it's not widescreen if you go to File, Project Settings, or Project Properties, sorry, you can click from widescreen to 4x3. There's some also some nice little features in here. You can take a look at them, but for the most part, that's all we need right now. Hit OK. And it's going to make the project the correct dimensions for the footage that I'm capturing at the moment. So at this point, I'm just going to see what I have. Hit the space bar and it will play through some of our footage and you see it's going to go to the next shot there so the, hopefully this will give you an idea in terms of how to assemble a quick little edit hit spacebar again and there we go it'll go to the next shot um, there are a few nice little features up here you can trim your clip if it isn't exactly how you want say for example you wanted a little bit more at the end of this clip here you can always click on the trim tab on the bottom right hand corner and extend it if it does have any to extend. It looks like this clip had nothing to extend so I'm going to contract it just so you can see the difference. So there I made it shorter. It's now 6.1 seconds. Same thing on the front end. You can click on the trim tab, bring it in. Now it's 5.2 seconds long. So that's a way to do a little bit of editing once you have it up in the program pane on the top. Another uh, neat little features of iMovie that can get you uh, getting your project looking a little bit more professional. Um, if you go to the Transitions tab, you have a few transitions you have to pick from. Cross Dissolve is the most popular. 
I'm just going to throw a cross dissolve at the very beginning. It defaults to 0.5 seconds. I'm going to right click it, set its duration to 3 seconds, and just apply it to this transition. And from here, now it's a 3 second transition, a little bit slower. And that works, I think, for us. You can throw transitions between other clips. And, sorry, I let go of it too soon. I'm going to get rid of that one just by highlighting, hitting delete. I'm going to put a cube between these two clips. Normally I wouldn't do a cube transition, but just so you know, you do have the option of putting whatever transition you want, either between the clips or at the end of clips. So let me throw one more cross dissolve at the end just to fade it out to black to finish it off. Uh, next thing you might want to do is titling. Hit the T tool and go to, let's just pick one here, centered. If you put it over your footage, you will have the text overlaying your footage. If you throw it at the end of your footage, let me hit spacebar, it will be on the black area behind your footage. Let me just grab and put it at the very end of the clip and it'll make another little black video frame basically where it can play your title. You can also grab on the clip and put it at the end of a sequence and that's just going to make a little area for you to have uh, black text come up on a black background and you can put credits here. Let me just do scrolling credits for example. Let me get rid of this title first. Highlight it and hit delete. Drag this one on top of the footage and you can see here spacebar you can have scrolling credits and if you set the duration on this for a little bit longer you'll have a slower transition or slower title sequence hit spacebar okay so I'm gonna get rid of this for right now get rid of this black footage and one more thing I just want to mention on the titling, you do have the option to change your fonts, top left hand corner. If you click on it, as you can see, you have your basic font selection here. As long as you highlight the text, it will change when you change your text. Beyond that, let's see what else we have. We have a little icon for photos. You're not going to be able to bring any photos unless you import them into iPhoto first. So you need to make uh, that in your iPhoto library within iPhoto before you can bring it into iMovie. Also, they do have some sound effects, but normally what people are do using with sound are actually sound audio files. So let me go to DMLXN and grab an audio clip. Tutorials, freebies, royalty-free audio. So I'm just going to drag an MP3, throw it over one of these pieces of footage, Wherever your cursor is, that's where it's going to start. You can see it has a green. It has a green little track underneath, and it will start playing your footage at this point. You can be playing your audio along with it. And you can trim the audio and move it around just like you can anything else within iMovie. So hopefully that gets you up and running fairly quickly with this program. Um, one last thing to mention, when you're exporting out the movie, you have a few options. One is just to export a movie that's just going to give you a QuickTime file, which you could then export out to um, DVD, or sorry, iDVD or DVD Studio Pro. You can also go to uh, YouTube really quickly, which is pretty cool, by selecting the YouTube function. I'll show you that on another tutorial if you'd like. It's really quick and easy. But basically, that's the uh, quick and dirty overview of iMovie. And if you have any questions, as always, you can come contact me in the Dynamic Media Lab or send me an email at dfergus at unr.edu.